Argentina for the MXGP of Patagonia, Argentina, round three of the FIM Motocross World Championship. We're about 1,600 kilometers southwest of Buenos Aires. And the last time we came here was back in 1995 for the 125 Grand Prix, which was in the north of the country in Coscan, Cordoba, which was won by Alessio Kiko Chiodi on a Renault e Yamaha. But in MXGP, so far this year, we've seen two different overall winners, Max Nagel in Qatar and Ryan Villapoto in Thailand three weeks ago. But it's Commander Sal who has a slender lead in the MXGP World Championship chase. This is MXGP Live. And it's round three of the World Championship. Well, earlier this weekend, it was quite sunny and warm, but it's starting to rain here now in the shadow of the Andes Mountains. Just to give you a quick look at to where we are, just 13 degrees, not very warm at all. And the rain still continues to drizzle out of our commentary position here. 30 minutes plus two laps will await the MXGP riders in a few moments' time. A quick look at the circuit there from the camera angle, but there's a, a graphic of it. About 85 metres into turn one, and then it's a very wide flowing racetrack, but it's loose, it's hard underneath. The rain might just add a little uh, bit of a dimension to it. But those guys there, they've loved everything they've seen, particularly in the MXGP qualifying race yesterday. But before we go any further, though, let's take a quick look behind the scenes at Yamaha Factory Racing Yamaha Loop. Well, the man making waves in the 2015 MXGP class is the rookie, Roma Febra. He's race-winning pedigree in MX2, but no one quite expected his current top five speed so early in the season, not even him. To be a rookie, it's, it's always nice because uh, I love the new challenge. And then I think compared to last year, I'm really more relaxed. And, you know, when I'm behind the gun, I surprise myself because I'm, I don't have stress. I'm really proud to, to Yamaha because uh, they gave me the, the chance to figure with their bike uh, in MXGP. And uh, the other team was not, uh, they don't give me the opportunity. And uh, I want to, I think the big thing is I want to show those teams that they was wrong, you know. So uh, for those teams, it's difficult to, to put the pressure on one rookie rider. So uh, it's difficult, but Yama did it, and I'm really pleased with that. His teammate is feeling the pressure, though, after disappointing races in Thailand, and no sign of his 2014 form, we took Jeremy Van Horbeek to the podium to remind him of what it's all about. It feels like coming home, you know. Um, definitely, this is my place, you know. It was maybe not in Thailand and Qatar, but from now on, you know, uh, I've, I've, I have another vision again on this season. And I spoke with Michele uh, also after Thailand, and, uh, you know, I, we came to the same opinion. Like, the season after uh, an unforgettable season, like being... Uh, I don't know, 13 times on the podium or 12 times and, and so many times in a row. I think it's, it's really impossible to do it like every year. So, and I was, I was putting a lot of pressure on me to do it like this again and, and maybe even better. But uh, you don't have to do it like this to be world champion. So, you know, that's uh, one thing that's clear now uh, and the pressure is a lot, a lot less than, than in the first two rounds. I'm not a quitter. I would never pull out of a track without a reason. And uh, we were like 15 seconds clear after uh, five laps. So we were gone, you know, gone from everybody. We had, uh, we were, the speed from our four riders, the top four was way above the, the rest. But then, uh, you know, the, my vision started to get blur again. To me, it was getting dangerous for myself. 
and then I prefer to take like a DNF than, than to, to get like 18 and two points. It would be a, lot, a big risk, you know, because I didn't saw properly the, the lines and the jumps and, and that's why I pulled out and I'm happy Thailand is gone and it was a difficult one for, because it was one of the toughest one of my career, I can tell you. I, I didn't sleep for three days about that. Like normally you have to go on, move on and, and put it aside straight away and it was impossible. But then once I, I finally let it go, you know, I was like on another planet. Was back like, back on track. <laughs> well, that was a look behind the scenes at Yamaha Factory Racing Yamalu, but let's go down to the grid. Here's Lisa Leyland with our championship leader, Clement de Salle. I'm at the start of the first MXGP race of the day and it's weird conditions, like the sun's been trying to come out and now it's raining a bit, so it's a little bit odd. I want to speak to Clement de Salle. He's been very consistent so far this year. He's had four second place finishes and of course is the championship leader so far. Clement, I want to talk a bit about qualifying yesterday. No problem with your speed, no problem uh, with your confidence, but you made a little mistake in the first few laps. What happened there? Yeah, exactly. I had a good start, so everything was okay. So my, my speed was good. Yeah, I just did a, a small mistake in the corner, so I, I lose some uh, few position, and uh, yeah, after I, I catch up uh, to come back um, four, and uh, it was good, you know. Anyways, just qualification, so it was it was okay. Exactly, and of course you're the current championship uh, red plate holder, but I guess you're not thinking too much about that at this early stage of the game. Yeah, exactly. Like I said already, I don't really uh, check about that. You know, I just want to have some good motors, good GPs coming and I uh, have some good results, I uh, like to be uh, strong and regular, that's my, uh, that's my uh, way to how I see it for the moment. Okay. Best of luck, thank you. Let's see how everyone else lines up behind Clement de Salle in the championship standings. <laughs> Championship then looks like this. Clement de Salle leads the way on 88 with Cairoli 9 further back. Nagel and Ryan Villapoto, the Monster Energy Kawasaki rider who was victorious last time out in Thailand, climbed to fourth and is only 18 points off of the championship lead. Roman Fevre is fifth, Paul Anna is sixth. Strybos, who's not here this weekend, he's just had an operation on his forearm. Bob Rochef eighth, Todd Waters is ninth, and Sean Simpson is tenth. Ahead of Rattray, Van Horbeek, Villaparts, Guarnieri, Koldenhoff, Boutron, Ferris, and Frossard. And there you see the rain now starting to fall here in Patagonia, Argentina. Well, as the riders prepare to make their way down to the start line and the fans take as much cover as they can. Here's what happened in the qualifying race yesterday afternoon in MXGP. And wow, what a race it was. Well, the gate eventually dropped on board here with Ryan Villapoto. Didn't get the best jump and got squeezed by Fevre and Van Horbeek, but snuck around the inside. Came out in around about 10th place as we go on board with Gautier Paul Lamb, but it was Desal and Nagel who ran through the first couple of corners up front. Nagel eventually finding his way into the lead as Paul Lamb was in a little battle there. Oh, sorry, Bobrashev in a battle with Desal. Filippoto, meanwhile, was charging his way through the field and was inside the top five in no time at all. Tony Cairoli, though, it was who led the race. Filippoto and Roman Fevre having a little go backwards and forwards at that stage, but then Villapoto, just behind the 89 of Van Horbeek, made an easy pass around the outside of the Belgian, and the American on the Kawasaki number two was ahead, and then up into third. He then went after Bobrashev. And the Honda rider had no reply here as he was too high on the jump. Villapoto put the squeeze, got his head down, and then went after Max Nagel. Gautier Paulan was having a tense ride in the qualifying race. He started down in eighth, eventually got himself up in the seventh, but his teammate was right in the thick of it, but then found himself being pushed from third on race on lap one, eventually down to eighth place. As the likes of Villapoto, de Salle, who made a mistake on the opening lap, came back past, and Van Horbeek and Fevre, they all came through, including his teammate as well. And he had this moment as well, which didn't help. That was DeSalle and Fevre going back past the Russian. 
on board with Bobashev as he went on board with uh, Paul and as he found a way past Evgeny Bobashev. And that put those two then seventh and eight on the two HRC Hondas. Max Nagel had about a six second advantage over Ryan Villapoto, but in about three laps that had been whittled down. It took a few more laps to find a way past, but when he did, it was impressive, and it was through the wave section over on the far side of the circuit, right in front of the main crowd. Over on this side of the circuit, Villapoto was then up into second place. And he was seven seconds adrift of Antonio Cairoli, the Red Bull KTM rider, who'd led from the very first lap. But as the race drew to a close, Villapoto could smell victory. He homed in on Cairoli. And this was how close it was for the final two laps. Cairoli just hanging on. The crowd loved it. Filippoto not letting up at all. The final turn, the chequered flag went out. It was a win for Cairoli for the second time in the qualifying race of the season. Filippoto was second, Nagel third, Vassal was fourth, and Van Horbeek was fifth. And a great show of appreciation between the two champions, Cairoli and Ryan Villapoto at the end of that qualifying race. Is that a sign of things to come a little later on today? Well, we hope so. Number 89 there, Jeremy Van Horbeek. We just saw a picture of him, but uh, Cairoli, Villapoto, Nagel, Sal, Van Horbeek, Fevre, Paula and Bobrashev. That's how they finished in the qualifying race. That's how they will line up on the grid. Waters, Simpson, Watson, Rattray, Frossard, Guarnieri, Philipparts and Charlier with Kolonov, Boutron, Benson, Gonsalves, Ferris, Didaika, Kamamoto and Lupino and the rest. Stephen Frossard, 183, the Wilvo Falkrent KTM runner. Again, picked up a hand injury at the opening round of the British Championship about two weekends ago. But able to ride here. Said it's not 100%, but it's okay to ride. Ryan Villapoto, though, looking at picking up a possible second Grand Prix victory of his career. He won the second round in Thailand two, uh, three weeks ago, of course, with a win and a third in what were very hot and humid conditions. For the crowd, there's Tony Cairoli. So different conditions to what we had in race one, of course, MX2, where it was interchangeable, sunny to start with, a little bit cloudy, but the drizzle coming in the end, but falling considerably heavier now than it ever did in MX2, and it's a little bit dark and gloomy out there as well. Sean Simpson, just there, number 24, alongside the number two of Ryan Villapoto, who in turn is alongside 28, Tyler Rattray, his teammate. Simpson coming home in 10th in the qualifying race. But there's your championship leader, Commander Sal, had a simple tip over whilst in third after lap one. Just in the right-hander before the uh, split rhythm section, working their way back towards the finish line area. But nothing that's going to dent his confidence. He still feels OK. And he is the championship leader after all, so he does have something to fight for this weekend. But there's Lupino. Had a strange qualifying yesterday, the number 77 on the Asamoto Honda. Came home 24th, he'll be disappointed with that. But uh, not too bad for Philip Benson. 19th, just see him on the right side of the box. But 19, Philip Arts, then Granary, Frossard, Cairoli, Nagel, Nathan Watson, Rattray, Villapoto, Simpson, Bobrashev, the 89 of Van Horbeek, 47 of Waters, the 21 of Paulin, the 461 of Fevre, and Clement de Salle in gate one, right up the inside. Thirty minutes plus two seconds. Uh, 30, 30 minutes plus two laps awaits the riders. Then in MXGP, the rain is falling. The circuit going to be a little bit slick underneath the rubber on these 450 and 350 machines. But the Monster Energy 15 second board has been hoiked up into the air. The big boom. The crowd are on their feet as well under the trees. They're in the best place. They're taking a little bit of shelter. But De Sal will want a good start. So too will. Brian Villapoto, Tony Cairoli and the rest as Ingo Parch, our race director, ushers the girls off of the start straight. The gate drops, away we go. And Villapoto getting squeezed, but he keeps it in there. He comes out pretty good as well in around fourth place, but it's DeSalle who leads away, 25. Villapoto gets pushed wide at turn two, but he's still there in fourth position. Now is that Simpson there in second? 
Looks like it as they came over the uh, the first crest, but it's DeSalle Simpson there in second place. One of the Hondas, is it Paul Lann? I think it might be uh, Spobrashev in third. Then Cairoli fourth, who's uh, squeezed his way past the American Villapoto there, who's gone uh, backwards again. Van Hornbeek has gone through as well. So Villapoto to the inside, looks at picking up a couple of positions, doesn't get the rhythm or the momentum through the rhythm section, but uh, nails it at the end of the section there. And uh, Simpson being pushed back to third already. That's Kai Rowley getting the hammer down and going after Clement de Salle. So de Salle, your race leader here, number 25, 222. Kai Rowley in second. Third is Simpson. Barbrashev fourth. Then it's Van Horbeek. Then uh, Villapoto in sixth place. As they work their way over the, uh, the step up. And then just behind them. Oh, Van Horbeek neatly ran the outside of the 777 of Bobrashev. Then it's uh, Fevre, then Boutron with a good start. But elbows out for uh, Evgeny Bobrashev. Apologies for the quality and sound if you're experiencing what I'm experiencing out there. But Ah, oh, Dedeika at number nine just getting pitched out of the seat there, it looked like. But it's over behind the finish line area. Clement de Salle on the Rockstar Energy Suzuki World MXGP machine. Cairoli all over the back of him, 222. Third, Simpson. Fourth, Van Horbeek. Villapoto goes round the outside of uh, Bobrashev and goes after the Yamaha as they come over the line now. So the first three, four, five, six guys over the line. Villapoto down the inside here in turn one at the inside of Van Horbeek and pushes the Belgian aside. Hard charging from Villapoto. Oh, and how close was that as they swatch lines as well? The American and the uh, 89, the Belgian. So to sell Cairoli, Simpson, Villapoto now in fourth. Van Horbeek in fifth. His teammate, Fevre, the 461 there. The lead rider in shot is just behind them in sixth. Bobrashev is in seventh. And Villapoto already setting the uh, timing screen purple with the fastest first sector split of a 24.8 compared to the 25.4 and 25.7 of DeSalle and Cairoli in front of the main crowded area here through the waves. Villapoto going after Simpson, who's on the right. Villapoto on the left is going to make a swing around the outside, but then cuts it nice and tight as well. Looking to carve up the inside here. Doesn't quite get it done, but gets good drive coming out of that turn. And Villapoto finds a way past Simpson and into third place. But Simpson holds the right-hand line in the next turn. And number 24, Itachi KTM rider. But Villapoto then, will he be able to square off the, uh, the Scott here? No, he reads it well, does Simpson. This is where, whoa, the back end getting a little bit loose air from the Kawasaki, but then this time he gets the power down and takes the line away from Simpson, who will respond immediately into this next right-hander. Oh, and he makes a mistake, and Van Horbeek looking to find a way back through, but doesn't get the right line through the rhythm section. But suddenly, Ryan Villapoto then just comes to a bit of a halt at the moment behind Sean Simpson, as to Sal and Kai Rowley just try and do what they can to give themselves a little bit of clear air. Max Nagel down in ninth. He was a fast starter in the qualifying race yesterday. And actually uh, pushed Tony Cairoli in the uh, first 10 minutes or so of the race. But over the line, the first official lap complete then. Fastest man on track is Commander Sala, 148.1. Looked like the Sala went up the inside. Sorry, uh, but a bit of might have found his way up the inside of Simpson. He hasn't. Simpson still hanging on. So the Sal, Cairoli, Simpson, Villapoto, they are your top four. There's Cairoli just disappearing out of shot. There's third, fourth. Fifth now is Fevre, finding a way past Van Horbeek, his teammate who gets pushed back to sixth. Bobrashev is seventh, Nagel is eighth, Boutron nine, Charlier is tenth, and Villapoto is through to third. Simpson trying to muscle his KTM back in front, and he does so. So Simpson not giving up here, but Villapoto was fast through here all weekend. And a big mistake there from Simpson allows Villapoto off the hook. Finally gets the pass on and moves into third and he's got clear track ahead of him to close down Cairoli is about three seconds further up track. Simpson's got the two Yamahas to deal with. First the one of Fevre and then the 89 of Van Horbeek. And then the HRC, the 777 of Bobrashev there in red. And then Nagel who wants to get in on the action as well. But the crowd loving this out there on the hillside. I'm struggling to hear any of the atmosphere out there. We're just having one or two uh, sound difficulties here. But Fevre just bouncing his way through the wave section there. And Simpson now finds himself under pressure from the two yams. Fevre leans on the Scott and finds a way through aggressively. So to Sal Cairoli, Villapoto, Roman Fevre having a great lap going from sixth to fourth. 
As I uh, take a quick look out of my window behind me, and you guys look on screen for the photo, not making inroads into Cairoli at the moment, but as we come over the line, let's see what the gap is. Uh, De Sal, Cairoli, Villapoto, all separated by four and a half seconds in this first MXGP race of the day here, the MXGP of Patagonia, Argentina. There's Villapoto just disappearing out of shot now. Third, here's Fevre and Van Horbeek, their fourth and fifth. The yellow flash on the clip there is uh, Sean Simpson. He's in sixth. Nagel on the Red Bull Ice One. Husqvarna finds himself in seventh position, but it's Cairoli, about two seconds down on uh, De Sal who uh, actually in the press conference yesterday, when quizzed about why he kept looking behind him, he said uh, he didn't have a problem, it's just his asthma. We're at altitude, well, 800 meters, and uh, but a little bit of dust in the paddock, didn't have any problems with the bike, but he was just trying to manage the situation and his breathing. He said he felt tight suddenly after 10 minutes. So he's obviously having to manage that situation here. But De Salle, who tipped over in uh, the right hander before the rhythm section, Got himself back into contention in fourth, but was uh, a long way off of these guys here as he came over the line. But he was happy with that fourth place. He knew that he got the speed, and all the confidence if he gets a good start. Well, he's leading the race at the moment for Rockstar Energy Suzuki. Cairoli Red Bull said KTM is in second, and Villapoto, lead rider in this shot here in third. He's got Casey Stoner, the former two-time uh, MotoGP world champion. Chat for him in the corner as Fevre dives down the inside of Villapoto. Didn't quite make the move there, though. That's the problem. When you go in hard into that right hander, you either have to turn tight and then have the slower lane through that rhythm section, or you have to take the guy out. And I think he stopped short there of taking out the number two, Ryan Villapoto. Might have seen it coming a little bit there as well, but Villapoto just got his hands full of the uh, exuberant Frenchman here, 461, Roman Fevre on the Yamaha. As they battle over third and fourth, but another fastest lap of the race from uh, Clement de Salle, 147.832. A 49-6 for Kai Rowley, a 48-6 for Villapoto. So, uh, almost a full second down on De Salle's time that time around. Front of Fevre at 47-8, so quicker than Villapoto, the guy ahead of him. But still, plenty of time left in this race. 22 minutes plus two laps, of course. Here's De Salle looking assured and confident at the head of the field. Well, he would be. He's 3.7 seconds clear of this guy, the Sicilian, Tony Cairoli, 2.22. Villapoto right there with him in third place. And Fevre. So suddenly we're looking at a possible four-way scrap for second position here involving the 2.22 of Cairoli, the two of Villapoto, Fevre and Van Horbeek, the two Yamaha riders who put a little bit of distance on Nagel, but Nagel not giving up the chase here. He's uh, putting in some decent lap times as well, a 48.9. Bobrashev is seventh. Simpson, uh, well, Simpson is eighth, but he's just crashed out under the bridge. So Simpson then, number 24 on the Itachi Revo KTM, picking himself up after such a promising start. Paulan then will leapfrog the Scott and go into eighth. Charlier will come into ninth, and Davide Guarneri on the factory TM will jump into uh, tenth place. Then we've got Koldenhoff. Oh, who's that running wide? I think it was Van Horbeek at the end of the straight. It was because Nagel is through. So Van Horvick getting it wrong at the end of the, uh, the the wave section and going straight on, just running wide. And Bobrashev's gone through as well, so costing him two positions, Jeremy Van Horvick. And that's Paulan as well, making up for lost time. Charlier, Guarneri, and uh, Koldanov there, 259 and the 47 of Waters. Right, watch this, top of your shot. Misses the turn, and gets stood up. Oh, catches the... Uh, the last wave, and then gets pitch looked, and then obviously Nagel and Bobrashev both go through. That's how deep it is if you go off track. So, four laps complete. De Salle, 3.4 seconds clear of Cairoli, who has his hands full with Villapoto. Nagel, we've lost Fevre. Fevre's dropped to seventh. So uh, Fevre has taken a fall as well because he was right there on the rear wheel of Villapoto. Whether it was uh, self-inflicted or whether it was a, a love tap from uh, the American, who knows, but uh, Villapoto now, though, has clear track around him because he's two seconds down from Kai Rowley. Oh, and who was that? Was that Van Horvick again? So Van Horvick, the back end, getting loose on the factory Yamaha. So two crashes in the space of half a lap for Jeremy Van Horbeek, the rider who finished runner-up in this championship to Kai Rowley last year. So it's all happening in, in the first few laps here of this MXGP first race. 
So to Sal and Kai Rowley, but Kai Rowley sets the fastest lap of the race that time around on lap four, and that's why he's probably 3.4 seconds adrift. And now he was, uh, well, he was actually about half a second quicker than De Sal that time around. Van Horbeek just needs to regroup here on the 89 and get back into the place. Here it is again, watch this. He just gets on the gas and then just catches it wrong. Back end loops around on him and off the back, just ragdolls himself out of contention. Right, here's Villapoto. Number two is lap time this time around. A personal best for him. His own fastest lap of the race, a 148.2. Kai Rowley, though, another 147.0 for him. And Lamarda Sal, a 148.3. So Kai Rowley, he's the guy in the ascendancy. He's got that gap down to 2.1 seconds. The gap between De Sal and Villapoto, the rider you're looking at on screen here, is 5.7 seconds on that Kawasaki. He's got uh, Max Nog, well, it was about two and a half seconds, but you see Nagel, number 12, charging in on Ryan Villapoto in fourth place. So what was a bad start for Max Nagel? He's turned that around, and he's, uh, well, he can sense. Here's Villapoto just going out of shot. Here's Nagel, number 12. He was the winner from the opening round in Qatar, a double race winner, of course, and the holder of the red flag going into Thailand a week later, but he's since lost that championship leader's plate, given that up to De Sal. Kai Rowley sits second in the championship, Nagel sits third, and Villapoto sits fourth. Here's a replay of the start, though. De Sal, a great jump up the inside, Van Horbeek alongside him. Just watch uh, Villapoto, just in front of the KTM banner. Just didn't get the legs, but he held it in there as... Uh, is that one of the locals at the back? Yep. Yeah. But Villapoto held it held his nerve, came out about fourth as De Salle took the foxhole shot. And here is your race leader, Clement De Salle, number 25. Kai Rowley all over the back of him as they go around the back marker. So this gap is not going to be 2.1 seconds anymore. It might even be another fastest lap of the race for Kai Rowley. De Salle over the line of 49.3, a 48.7, but that gap, one and a half seconds now between De Salle and Kai Rowley. That rider there on that Red Bull KTM, the 2.2.2. And their gap has gone out to six and a half seconds to Ryan Villapoto between De Salle and the American. So Kai Rowley then pushing the pace, pushing onto the rear wheel of Clement De Salle. And the, uh, the two riders from MXGP, De Salle and Kai Rowley, just here. Just starting to edge a little bit further away from Ryan Villapoto with 16.45 on the clock. And nothing in it, just a second between Villapoto in third and Nagel in fourth now. So the German, Max Nagel, on the Red Bull Ice One Husqvarna. So we've got two very good and interesting battles looking at uh, shaping up here. De Salle, your race leader there in red on the yellow Suzuki. Kai Rowley behind him on the orange KTM, about five seconds, five and a half seconds further back. Here's Villapoto here on the green Kawasaki. And the white Husqvarna just behind him of Max Nagel. Then we've got Bobrashev just lurking about five seconds adrift in fifth place. Roman Fevre has remounted to get himself back into six, but nothing in it. Look at Nagel, he's definitely got the bit between his teeth as he goes after the American through the wave section. Turns a tighter line over the crest of the hill. Nagel, will he dive it down the inside? He does, and he moves up into third place. So nice little bit of riding then from Max Nagel, who the last couple of laps has definitely got his race face on and got himself into third position now oh nothing in it between Kai Rowley and De Salle those all over the back of the race leader now the elbows out for the 25 the race leader and championship leader Kai Rowley round the outside makes it look oh so easy and De Salle will respond straight away he's got the smoother line will he take the line away yes he does Kai Rowley has to take avoiding action De Salle possibly wasn't quite expecting it, so we've definitely got a race on here, folks, for the race lead here between De Salle and Kai Rowley. Nagel now third, Villapoto fourth, Bobrashev is still fifth. Fevre about two seconds adrift in sixth position, but he was right in the mix with Villapoto a couple of laps ago before he uh, took a, an off-track excursion somewhere. Charlier is now seventh for 24 MX Honda. 
And then Guaneri for the TM factory. All in down in line. It's not been his uh, weekend so far. He's been struggling all weekend long. Maybe riding a little bit too tight. Maybe he doesn't quite like the circuit uh, conditions. The, the ground is very strange here. So to sell then, here's your replay. Just cruising into the first turn. I possibly heard Kai Rowley. Thought he might switch it to the inside. But Kai Rowley had better ideas. He just wound down the throttle. Got some decent traction. Sailed around the outside of the south to take the lead briefly for about 100 yards or so. De Sal was able to square back off going into turn two. And ran Kai Rowley wide in the next turn. Back with the leaders. A couple of corners from the finish line. Kai Rowley going high, wide, looking for the momentum. Sal just holding all the inside lines. The gap now between the Sal and Kai Rowley, 1.3 seconds. And here we are once again. Oh, just losing the front end a little bit there on the Suzuki. Come on, Sal. Nagel, about six seconds adrift. And he's put three seconds between himself and Ryan Villapoto now. So uh, the lap times of the front runners are 47.9 for DeSalle, 48.9 for Kai Rowley, 49.3 for Nagel, and a 50.4 for Ryan Villapoto. Bobrashev on a 51.6. He's still there circulating in fifth place. And the Russian, well, that'll be his best result of the season so far. Eighth and ninth at the opening round in Qatar, tenth and twelfth in the heat of Thailand. Roman Fevre is still sixth. Charlier having his ride of the year as well so far in seventh. He picked up an injury in Qatar, couldn't ride in Thailand. Guineri is eighth, Paulan nine, Waters is tenth. De Dijka, number nine, is in eleventh place. Then Jeremy Van Horbeek has remounted and got back in the race in twelfth after an off-track moment at the end of the wave section. And, uh, oh, no, just the shoulder there from Kai Rowley. So is he thinking about managing the situation here in that second position or just looking to see if he does launch an attack on uh, the guy ahead of him? Lamar de Sal, what are the consequences if it all goes wrong? Well, Nagel is six seconds further back. And he's not lapping, or not on that lap occasion anyway, quicker than Kai Rowley. Through the uh, split section. That's Arena. The uh, mechanic, chief technician for Tony Kai Rowley there. Just trying to take a peek out of the garage on pit lane to see exactly what's going on out on track. The mechanics can actually see quite a lot of the racetrack, as can anybody on the circuit here. But uh, 1.6 that gap, a 48.8 and a 49.2, so not much in it between the Sal and Kai Rowley still. With uh, just under 12 minutes plus two laps to go. Nagel now seven seconds adrift. And only one tenth quicker than Villapoto that time around in fourth. Robichev still there in fifth. Still waiting for him to come over the line. He's eight seconds behind Ryan Villapoto. Fevre, though, probably two or three seconds back in sixth place. And still Charlie Aguineri, Paul and, and Waters. Dodaika, 11th. Van Orbeek, 12th. Nathan Watson is 13th. Stephen Frossard is 14th. Simpson is in 15th. Philip Bengtsson, 16th. Rattray, Boutron, Gonsalves and Lupino. The final championship point scorer at the moment. One point six the gap between De Sal and Kai Rowley as they came over the line after nine laps. De Sal, who up until yesterday had finished second in the two qualifying races, second in all four races, but came here with the red plate, the championship leader's red plate. Just had a slight glitch in qualifying when he fell. He fell from third actually down to uh, seventh or eighth. Eighth place, actually, and got himself back into fourth. So definitely coming into this first race, he knew there was no question of speed. And he has been the most consistent rider in the championship so far. There's Kai Rowley. Digging it deep into the berm. Gap probably still around about one and a half seconds, something like that. There's Paul Ant, first time we've seen him through this race as he goes uh, around Guineri, the number 39 on the TM. Oh, 2.2, that gap now between DeSalle and Kai Rowley. Back marker just ahead of them in the first corner. DeSalle sweeps around the outside of the back marker. This shot here, Charlie A, number 23, and the 21 of Gautier Paulin. 
as they work their way towards the finish line to complete their 10th lap. So to Sal, Cairoli, Nagel, they top three. Ryan Villapoto, though, was quicker than the German that time around and has got that gap to within two seconds. So Ryan Villapoto looking at having a, a second half of this race charge at uh, the German Max Nagel as Paul and find a way past the 24 MX Honda of Christophe Charlier, but yields to his fellow Frenchman. And Paul Ant just rides around the outside. So Paul Ant, 21, the lead Honda in that shot. Now finds himself in seventh place. Just ahead of him on the tabletop a moment ago was Roma Fevre in sixth. Still three seconds behind uh, Bobrashev. So here is Bobrashev, HRC. Dropping up into that 180, dropping back down and over the first little crest. Eight seconds behind Ryan Villapoto now, the Russian. Number 777 there. But with eight and a half to go, De Sal continues to lead. He's 2.2 seconds clear of Antonio Cairoli. They're getting ready to come over the finish line now. Nagel is third, Villapoto fourth, and the Russian Evgeny Bobrashev is fifth. And that gap between the, the two lead riders, De Sal and Cairoli, now two and a half seconds. So another three tenths of a second. Eked out there by the Belgian on the Rockstar Energy Suzuki for Clement de <laughs> Just under eight minutes to go. Ryan Villapoto up on the pegs through that fast sweeping right handed turn two over the first of three lovely floating jumps. Second one, the biggest one. He was carrying so much speed through here yesterday. Up into turn three, the gap between him and Nagel has uh, gone to about three seconds now. So Filippoto just at the end of the wave section, the back end just getting out slightly in shape. But the crowd, they love the uh, effort that he put into the qualifying race yesterday. Now finding himself back onto the rear wheel of the German on the husband Max Nagel. So as he comes over this jump here, Nagel just in this next right hander. Floats over the crest. That's the gap there between those two guys. So that does not look like almost three seconds. Doubling his way just off the last of those two waves. Trying to take a tighter turn. Thought he was offline there just ever so slightly, but turn 11. Mechanics put in the uh, the board out for him as he gets ready to come over the line. And look at now, that's the penultimate corner. You can visibly see that Nagel is being caught here by Ryan Villapoto, who gets over the double nicely into the finish corner. So 11, uh, 12 laps complete now, then to Sal. Oh, I tell you what, this is getting interesting now because DeSalle and Cairoli, they are split by 1.3 seconds. That's been a good lap for Cairoli. It was 1.2 quicker than the Belgian that time around. Nine seconds further back is Max Nagel, and he has about a second and a half over Ryan Villapoto. Bobrashev still in fifth. Just under six minutes to go, plus two laps in his first MXGP race here. MXGP of Patagonia, Argentina to Sal Cairoli, separated by 1.3 seconds now. This guy, Max Nagel, number 12, about nine seconds further back. And Ryan Villapoto suddenly gets on a late charge here. He's about a second and a half adrift of the number 12. As we uh, reach the uh, conclusion, there's probably around about, what, six or seven laps left here. Because the uh, next two races, about 18 laps. A little earlier on, but to Sal, despite briefly being overtaken by Tony Cairoli for about the space of 100 metres, has always been in control in this first MXGP race. The track now starting to rough up. It's quite soft on top, it's a little bit hard underneath, but the sun now coming out. Did have rain at the start of the race, remember? Oh! Back end to Sal, almost having a moment there as he came out of that turn 12 
over the bomb hole. Back end just stepped out wickedly. Well, there's no point thinking that this is a done deal yet, come on, because uh, that there, just a little reminder of how quickly things can change. So he comes over the line, but he's managed to get that gap to 1.7. It was 1.3, so despite that little bit of a, a twitch, but Cairoli is right there waiting in the wings. How many times do we see this from Cairoli? Doesn't feel the need to push on early on in the race, does he? But in the end of the race is where it matters, but he's also very aware of what's going on around him, who and, and how far back they are, and he'll know that Nagel is now eight seconds back. Filippoto, another three seconds further back, according to our timing screen. So it's DeSalle, Cairoli, Nagel, Filippoto. Watch this. So he just comes out of turn 12. Back end. Did he just have a bit of a twitch? There, yes, just on the downside. As he got on the gas, he stepped out to the left and pitched back to the right. So we just cut away from there just a little bit too early. Back marker in front of Kai Rowley. Benson, yep, so Philip Benson, number 11. On the 24 MX. Honda, he is in 16th place, just ahead of Tyler Rattray, Jose Boutron, Rue Gonçalves, and David Villaparts. That's him here. Teros flapping in the wind from his goggles. This is one of the local guys, but DeSalle and Kai Rowley, they're the guys that are still disputing the lead. Nagel and Filippoto still disputing third place. Pogreshev has a five-second cushion over Roman Fevre. Paulin is about five seconds further back in seventh. Christophe Charlier is eighth, Guineri is ninth, and Van Horming now up in the tenth. The Dyker 11th, Waters 12th, Nathan Watson is 13th, Frossard is 14th, and uh, Sean Simpson in 15th. As we look at Philip Benson here, number 11 in 16th place. Frossard just flying across the uh, the jump in front of him in that distinctive orange and yellow Wilvo Fort Rent KTM clothing. Here's your race leader, though. On the south. Through turn two again, another dodgy moment there. The back end just stepping out. He's two seconds clear of Kai Rowley. So another three tenths pulled out from the Belgian, number 25, the championship leader and current race leader. Only three laps to go here because uh, lap time's 1.47. We've got 2.12 left on the clock. Looking good for Mondesau, has to be said. reacted immediately as well when Kai Rowley came through. That can sometimes be the problem. You find yourself being pushed back to second. You accept it for too long. It's, fine. it's difficult to get back on, on course there unless you're very confident in what you're doing out on track. But the South didn't want to waste too long. He uh, immediately turned back up the inside and took Kai Rowley wide. Almost ran him over the berm, I think, as well, just to put another couple of bite lengths between them. Kai Rowley. Still there within striking distance. A mistake from DeSalle now would obviously let him through, but what has Cairoli got? He also knows that... Nice line around the outside there. He also knows that there's an, another 30-minute plus two-lap race ahead. So potentially another 35 minutes or so. Penultimate corner. DeSalle, high and wide around the back marker. Cairoli, similar line. Comes up on the back marker, so 150.5 for DeSalle, a 150.9, so that gap now 2.3 seconds between the lead two riders. Nagel, he's through and over the line, and Villapoto now slips to about five seconds behind the German Max Nagel. Here he is, number 12, and you see the flash of green through turn one in the background, Ryan Villapoto. So Ryan Villapoto not able to show the kind of speed that he displayed in qualifying yesterday. Max Nagel though, just front end a little bit high. But he'll be pleased with this performance. Right back on track. Two wins at the opening round, remember. Fourth in race one in... Uh, Rui Gonçalves, the tight little right. Caught a few riders out yesterday, but the back end just coming around on him. And then uh, a little bit of whiskey rodeo going on there for the Portuguese. Down in 19th place.
Max Nagel. Red Bull Ice One Husqvarna Factory Racing. Number 12, he is in third place. Getting back to the form that we saw in Qatar at the opening round of the year. Two race wins there, of course. In fact, fourth in race one in Thailand, 11th in the second race. Bad start and uh, a little bit of the heat getting to him, I guess. But is he here at the moment, right where he needs to be? third place and potentially challenging for uh, another overall Grand Prix victory. See the difference there, Villapoto choosing the right-hand side split this time. He was so fast on the left there yesterday in all the practices and all the qualifying sessions, but maybe just not feeling too comfortable because if you get it short, if you're watching right at the start of the broadcast with the qualifying race, Bobrashev came up so short through there and was almost through the front door as a result of that. But two laps to go and Ryan Villapoto now 16 laps complete. 14 and a half seconds off of the lead, but uh, to Sal, the man in charge, he's still two seconds clear of Kai Rowley, who are seven seconds clear of uh, Max Nagel. There's Frossard and Koldenhoff. So, Frossard, well, he was in 13. Koldenhoff, is he a lap down? I think he is, actually. Unless he has a problem with the transponder, because he uh, looks in pretty good shape at the moment. So De Sal, Kai Rowley, Nagel, Villapoto, Bobrashev, Paul, and the top six. Charlie A, seventh, February eight, Guarneri nine, and Van Horbeek is tenth. Then we have Waters to Dyke and Frossard in the orange. So uh, Koldenhoff not showing inside the top twenty. So it's either a transponder issue or he is being lapped here and uh, trying to unlap himself on the Rockstar Energy Suzuki Europe machine. Looks like Waters just ahead of him coming into land. There's the Dyker, number nine bottom of shot, and then Frossard just here in the uh, orange and yellow. But he just out. Right back towards the finish, and Kai Rowley is putting in a charge. So just as we suspected, it's game on here, folks. Clement de Sal, as they come over the line to take the one-lap board, there's absolutely nothing in it between him and Kai Rowley, who goes from one side of the track to the other. He's getting his head down. He wants the 25 points for a race win here. Kai Rowley going after the Suzuki of de Sal. Now he's sat there. He's, bowed, he's bided his time. He got caught. Just through this corner here, went to Sal, find a way back through into the lead after being passed momentarily. But uh, Cairoli, he won't want to lose to this rider here, Clement de Sal. They've got a great rivalry and a great respect, but there have been one or two occasions where there's been a little bit of needle between these two guys. So three quarters of a lap to go. Back markers starting to come into play as well, but DeSalle will know that Kai Rowley's there. The crowd are on their feet. They're making all kinds of noise out there in what is a grandstand finish here, MXGP race one. This is what it was like at the end of qualifying yesterday between Kai Rowley and Villapoto. In that very corner, that's about as close as they were. So it's down to Kai Rowley now. What has he got up his sleeve? And how defensive will DeSalle ride in the uh, final half a lap here? DeSalle, Kai Rowley, absolutely nothing in it. It was 0.8 as they came over the line, but you can see it's not. Oh, Kai Rowley's gone down. Kai Rowley's down. And that's it. He was pushing a little bit too hard. He didn't come out. It's just over the crest. That's where Rui Gonçalves crashed a moment ago. And that's it. So to Sal and Nagel's right there as well. So Kai Rowley. And we have a replay. Kai Rowley goes up into the oh crest. He just oh horrible moment for Kai Rowley. He goes down hard. He was fortunate enough to pick it up though. But uh, Clement de Sal is two corners away from the finish line, just behind our commentary position. Final corner now, Clement de Sal. He's going to pick up the 25 points in his first race win of the year for Rockstar Energy Suzuki. Wow, what a finish to that first MXGP race. De Sal wins it. Kai Rowley is going to hang on for second. And Nagel will be there in third. Here is Ryan Villapoto, two corners to go. And Villapoto for Monster Energy Kawasaki will have to settle for fourth. And he was 20 seconds down on De Sal at the finish of that race. Bobrashev, we wait for him to come through. He's coming into the final corner now in fifth. And it will be his teammate Paul Ann in sixth. And a great ride for Christoph Charlier in 24MX in seventh position. Here's Commander Sal. Here's Lisa Leyland. Let's hear what our race winner has to say. 
does ask, congratulations, first race win uh, of the season, but Coralio was pushing so hard at the end, he made a little mistake, but you've got the points, congratulations. Yeah, thank you, yes, I feel good, you know, my start was really good, happy about it. Then uh, I could really concentrate on myself to do good lap because we really tricky track, you know, sometimes you see something and it comes different. So I'm really happy uh, to win uh, this kind of track, you know, it's, uh, I, I'm really proud of me. Thanks, come on. Thank you. 25 big points then for the number 25, Clement de Salle, as he, well, he applied the pressure to Kai Rowley, who felt he had to go for the win there, and it was he who made the mistake. So, good job to Salle, good job Rockstar Energy Suzuki World MXGP. So as we just see a replay then, and best moments from Clement de Salle, let's take a quick look at the official classification then from MXGP Race 1. Clement de Salle is your winner. Kai Rowley second, Nagel third, Ryan Villapoto fourth, Bobachev fifth, Paul Lambert sixth, Charlie eighth, Fevre, Van Horbeek and Guineri your top ten with Todd Waters, Kinder Dijker, Stephen Frossard, Sean Simpson, Nathan Watson, Tyler Atre, Philip Benson, Jose Boutron, David Philippartz and Dean Ferris picking up one point there at the end. <laughs> Championship standings look like this. De Salle extends his lead then. 12 points clear now. It was nine at the start of the race. Kai Rowley second, Nagel third. No change in the top four positions, but Paulan moves up to one at the expense of Roman Fevre. Likewise, for Bobrachev at the expense of the injured uh, post surgery, Kevin Stribos. Todd Waters, no change for him in ninth, or Simpson in tenth. Jeremy Van Horbeek moves up to 11th, but uh, just numbers for Van Horbeek, who finished second in this championship a year ago. Manufacturers Championship looks like this. Suzuki on 113, they're 11 clear of Husqvarna. KTM a third, Kawasaki fourth with Yamaha on the TM in seventh. A little bit of work going on out there on track because in just over an hour's time we'll be back for MX2 Race 2. But let's take a quick look at some of the highlights from MXGP Race 1. The gate drops. Wasn't the best jump for Ryan Villapoto, but he did come out inside the top five as De Salle storms to the Fox hole shot ahead of Sean Simpson. Villapoto, Obrashev, Van Horby, Cairoli trying to sneak around the inside though. Villapoto was up to fourth at this stage, but just couldn't get the drive through there. Lost a couple of places on the entry to the wave section. But then he got his head down, started to go to work, found a way past the 89 of Van Horby. And then Sean Simpson was next on the radar of the number two. Gave him a bit of a hard time for uh, a lap or so before eventually finding a way through, but had to wait a little while longer. Sean Simpson then just ran in too wide. Villapoto up the inside. They swapped places once more. And guess what? Over the crest of the hill, Simpson was back in third. 
Van Horbeek was running it in there as well, but eventually Sean Simpson made this mistake. That allowed Villapoto a clean route through, and then he could focus on the guys ahead of him. Fevre was in there as well, mixing it with his teammate. As Villapoto then started to come under pressure in that third place by Max Nagel on the Red Bull Ice One Factory Husqvarna at number 12. And despite all his efforts, couldn't find a way through. But this was almost a game changer. Kai Rowley thought he found a way past De Sal, who responded immediately the very next turn, took the Sicilian wide, not quite over the berm, but he just stamped his authority right there and said, I will not be bullied out of the lead. And from then, De Sal was able to open up a nice, comfortable victory, a, a, a margin over Kai Rowley. It was no more than three seconds for the rest of the race. Paul Ann had a difficult race, eventually came back into six behind his teammate, Genny Bobrashev. But Ryan Villapoto in third was soon pushed back to fourth by Nagel. A couple of moments in the closing stage of the race for De Salle allowed Kai Rowley to close in on the Suzuki. And that set up a nice grandstand finale with the last couple of laps still to go. Filippoto in the end, a distant third, a uh, distant fourth by the time the checkered flag fell. Frossard, the 183, came home in 13. No points though for the guy on the right on the 259 Suzuki, Glenn Koldenhoff. But De Sal won the race, Kai Rowley was second, Nagel was third, Villapoto fourth, and Evgeny Bobrashev was fifth, with Paul and Charlier, Fevre, uh, Fevre, Van Horbeek and Guineri, your top ten. Ooh, it was very tight between Sean Simpson and De Sal for the Fox hole shot. And I'm just being told it was actually Sean Simpson on the Itachi Revo construction machinery KTM who took the Fox Hole shot and his first black plate of the year. But Nagel has two, Rattray has one, Kairoli has one, and now Sean Simpson at his name to the list as well. Well, it's a fabulous location here in Patagonia, just outside the uh, city of Villa La Angostura about five or six K away from where we are. But before we disappear, let's take a quick look at some of the more ambient moments so far here this weekend. Some of these images from earlier on in the race will be back in about an hour's time. MX2, race two, and the concluding part of MXGP. Don't go away. We hope you can join us.